Happy Friday and welcome back to Fan Question Friday. Hope y'all had a great week. It's been a really exciting one here. Thank you so much for all the kind words and comments that you've given me this week for dinner in 321.com. It's been so exciting to see what you guys think of the website. I've been anxious to share it with you for a very long time. Um, for those of you who haven't yet, you can still enter for the giveaway this week. It ends tomorrow night, 9 p.m. Eastern time. Anybody that subscribes and has to put a comment or a rating or a response on any recipe on the website, um, then you'll be entered for a $50 gift card to Amazon. And I'll announce it Sunday morning, 9 a.m. Eastern time. Um, but I had great questions entered and they were entered through the homepage on the website. There's a place where you can send in Fan Question Friday questions. Um, the first one, I wrote them down because I have an appointment to go to, so I thought I'll have time in the car before we get started. I'm having some problems with my blood pressure and I'm supposed to watch my sodium. Can you give me some quick tips? Yes, we can do that. Just quickly, just so you have that number in your head too when you're looking at labels, 2300 milligrams a day of sodium is what you're trying to limit to unless your doctor told you otherwise. Some people have lower. But that's about the equivalent to about one teaspoon of salt. So the best thing I, that I can really tell you, and really it's the best thing for weight loss, diabetes management, overall nutrition is planning ahead. Planning ahead for the week is huge because what do you do when you're not thinking ahead and planning ahead? Then you start going to convenience foods more often and you just go out and get things really quickly. I challenge you to go look on some of your favorite restaurants plate you know places and look at the nutrition information for a few of the things that you like to eat it will probably shock you how much sodium is in their meals if they provide that to you when you cook at home you've got control of how much sodium there is from the beginning to the end of course anything that is more packaged the more packaged it is or preserved the more, the more likely the sodium is going to be higher so the fresher you can cook the better too I get the question a lot of, is canned okay? Absolutely, I, I am a big cheerleader for canned vegetables, frozen vegetables, re, you know, fresh vegetables, all of them. Um, yes, the, the can have a little bit of sodium in there, but they're also at their peak freshness too, so they're always gonna be really delicious. But you could always choose one of the lower sodium varieties that they have, because there are lots of canned products that have lower sodium or no sodium added. And then you could drain it, you can rinse them, you could do things like that. Also canned products like the um, soups, like I make a lot of casseroles and things that often um, call for cream of chicken soup and cream of mushroom soup. They have heart healthy versions that you can get too that are gonna be lower sodium than the regular versions. So you could do that. You do have to be mindful of the products that are just you know, historically very high in sodium, tomato products, um, deli meats you got to be careful about cheese um, I think I said tomato products but salsas anything in the canned aisle um, sauces I'm trying to think on the surface some frozen meals fro fro <coughs> frozen meals can be tricky they can be from like 200 milligrams to over 3,000 milligrams a meal. So, so you just really have to make it part of your daily practice that you are counting your sodium. For patients that I have one-on-one -on -one and I teach them, I actually tell them to take two or three days of everything that they normally eat and tally up how much sodium they're having. They're gonna probably find that some meals it's no problem, they're keeping it pretty low, and then some they're like, oh good lord, I didn't realize I was having a meal's worth in that meal or a whole day's worth in that meal of sodium. And that, sauces can really add up with sodium. I had one the other day, it was, I saw in the store, it was 1,700 milligrams for two tablespoons. And I'd say someone would easily use that in on their plate if they weren't, if they didn't know otherwise. Um, so the, the fresher things that you can get, the better. I did get the question the other day too, is sea salt better than regular salt? If you were to measure like a, sea salt versus you know iodized table salt yes the sea salt in a teaspoon has less because they're bigger pieces they're going to be clunkier in your measuring spoon um, so if you leveled both of them off yes the, the regular salt is more compact so there is more sodium in that one so yes there is less in sea salt but if you were to grind up that sea salt to be the same you know powdery consistency of regular salt then they'd have the same or just about pretty close okay 
Uh, but one, one thing people say too is that sometimes they use a little bit less salt when they're using seasoning, the, the, the sea salt. Um, also, look at your seasoning. Some seasonings are really high and some you can, you can find that are really delicious. I ordered some ice spice seasoning the other day and I ordered their chicken, beef, and Jamaican jerk and they're really good. There's no sodium in them. Um, so sometimes that's really good if like maybe I'm using a sauce that does have sodium, I might use a seasoning that doesn't have sodium. Um, Danos is good, um, but there, it's a low sodium one. There's, there's plenty out there, but you know, Mrs. Dash is probably the oldest that I know of, you know, in the book that's low sodium, no sodium. But those are some things that are gonna definitely help. Also exercise, exercise is gonna definitely help your blood pressure as well. Um, so, you know, so watching the sodium in your diet is a big deal, but um, you know, it, it's just a piece of the puzzle and helping your blood pressure as well. I also had a question about Pinterest. Um, a gal asked me, I can see that you're, you're able to pin your recipes on your website. Can you give me a tip on how to organize? Yes, what, I, I actually did this myself because I found myself just constantly pinning things to random boards or I just had like a board that said things that look good to eat or something, you know, not really specific. And then when I would go to make plans, they're kind of all over the place. I can't really find what I'm wanting to, to cook. So the recipe category on the website, use that as your guide on dinner321.com. I have them in categories, all the recipes now, and you could make a board on your Pinterest page to represent each. So that whenever you're pinning recipes, say you found a delicious salad on you know, someone's blog, you can choose to pin it and put it in your salads. Um, if you got like a really yummy idea for your lunch or wrap, you know, have a board that is for, you know, yummy lunch ideas. Um, but that will really help. And then what you could do with your old ones, after you've created the boards that are more specific, go to, go to your old boards. This takes some time as well. I mean, I, I remember I did it at a conference once. I was pretty bored, but um, I went through each pin and I put them where they should have gone in the right categories. And then that, now if I'm really trying to go make plans for some breakfast ideas, I've got a whole board that has casseroles in it and muffins and scones. And I might even put the scones and stuff in like breads too, but nonetheless, um, it's easy to find now. Okay, so make your, make your new boards more specific to the different types of foods. Take your old pins, put them in the board that they should belong. And then moving forward, you'll have all your boards set up and ready to go. You're also gonna be able to probably delete a lot of things that you thought, oh, that looked good at the time, but yeah, I probably won't ever make it. <laughs> but I hope you guys have a great weekend. And again, I wanna thank you so much for all your support. I'll see you again next week.